Instagram. Much for joining for tasting time. Hi, I'm Katie O'Reilly, and welcome to Katie's Food Carnival. Summer eating keeps going on and on. It's a bounty of ideas and freshness just jumping out the garden at you. And we are here to create together an incredible array of possibilities to eat, to feed your friends, to feed your family all summer long. Let's get creative in the carnival kitchen. Hi, Katie O here in the carnival kitchen with some summertime eating. Once again, the flavors get so deep and intense. I cannot wait to share these marinades with you and get you creating some new things to put in your mouth this summer because the same old food gets really boring. And summertime is a time of light eating, but really intense flavors that carry you through. Because when it's hot, you don't want a lot of food in you. What you want is a lot of flavor in your mouth. So that's where we're headed tonight. So thanks for joining me. This is an excellent episode. And I will just keep showing you this summer eating because I love it. So what do we even begin with? Well, let's go with the overall concept of the marinade. Marinade onto a grill is going to be one of the best ways because the grill's outside, you don't have heat in your house, marinate it, it infuses into your food and brings everything alive. Starting with scallops. Now, scallops come in two sizes. There's two types. There's bay scallops and sea scallops. The ones that are hardier for the grill are the sea scallops. Let's take a look at how we might marinate these and then also thread them with a little zucchini. I think scallops on the grill are one of the most delicious summer ingredients. And I want to show you how to marinate them in a unique way. Now, all the marinades I'm going to show you today can be used in different ways with different ingredients. However, this one goes super well and is absorbed by that scallop so interestingly. You'll know what I'm talking about. I have four large sea scallops. These are the large size. They've been patted a little bit dry so they'll absorb. Two tablespoons of olive oil, a tablespoon of lime juice, and some cilantro that's been chopped. Oh, that's so good. I can smell it. A little jalapeno that's been de-seeded and very finely chopped. So it's not too spicy, but it's got a little kick. And this is super. This is the rind, the zest of a lime. So this is gonna add that citrusy kind of interesting note that we're not sure where it came from. And when we stir this all up, we'll let it marinate in the fridge. I always like a two hour marinade at least on something like that. So we're gonna soak our skewers before we use them. These are wood skewers. We're gonna lightly grill our zucchini just a second, just to get a mark on it so we can bend it and it's a little more pliable. And we're gonna take a scallop. First, we'll start with thread the tip of that zucchini on there. That's fun. Then let's get a little scallop. And then wrap that scallop in the zucchini. Oh yeah. And then another scallop. This is gonna go right on your grill. You can even add a third on there. It depends on how big you want them. But that's gonna go right on your grill and it only takes about two to three minutes to grill these. Grill mark them, get them beautifully cooked through, but not that you want them just a little opaque in the center. So you get that meatiness of that scallop. If you have extra marinade them, glaze them right after they're hot off that grill. You are in for a summer treat. And with that nice, beautiful char on there, oh, you want to eat it just looking at it, goes right in your mouth. Mmm. Delicious. The reason I like the ribbon of zucchini is it adds a touch of texture, not too much, but it also looks so pretty. 
because scallops are very one dimensional. They are white. So if you're serving those on a white plate, I like to add just that little cool threading of the green and that picks up the char too. Yeah, it's all about the look. Eating with your eyes first. It's art. Shrimp on the Barbie. Need I say more? I love them, love them, love them. There are so many ways you could do it. Any of these marinades, I'm gonna say it several times in this episode, could be swiped in and out with different proteins. So don't think that this marinade has to go with that protein. Use them in different ways at different times. That's getting creative in the kitchen. But today, I'm doing a pretty standard marinade on our shrimp because I like the basic flavors that can highlight just the seafood flavor of those shrimp. So let's take a, take a look at this marinade and also how they're intertwined on the skewer. Shrimp on the Bobby, shall we say? One of everybody's summer favorites in every continent. Shrimp are delicious when they're barbecued. I really like to keep them simple and the marinade speaks volumes when it's, it allows the shrimp to really sing with its own flavor. First, we wanna start off, we have to devein our shrimp. Do not forget to take out that vein. A big shrimp, a colossal shrimp is delicious on the grill because it holds that juiciness and it's so meaty. Okay, let's get into the marinade and I'm gonna make a little extra. I'm not gonna actually add my shrimp to this because when you're making a marinade, if you have extra that's not been cross-contaminated with your raw product, you can put it on after. Okay, so what goes into the marinade that I did use for my shrimp? A little olive oil, third of a cup, third of a cup of white wine, and a third of a cup of lime juice. So yummy. And mm, just that aroma alone. Some really dense granulated garlic. And I, garlic is like, ugh, I can't have enough of it on shrimp. I don't know why, I just wanna keep eating it. So, we're gonna whip up this little marinade here. And in order to offset for our breath and digestive purposes, all of that garlic, we're gonna add a little parsley. And you can add as little or as much as you like. I suggest at least a hearty tablespoon of chopped parsley. And this is definitely fresh parsley. So once again, we are gonna soak our skewers, if you're using wood skewers, in water for about an hour so they don't burn on your grill. You're gonna take those shrimp that marinated, oh, two plus hours in the fridge, and you're gonna intertwine them. And I want you to see, this is actually four shrimp. Do you count the tails? It's like head, it's like the yin and yang. So cute. And then there's two of them so they make rounds. Because when you grill them up, Oh, yum. This is four shrimp that can eat like a meal. Look at that char on there. It's delicious, but you can see that they're still moist. And then, just to demo the purpose of this extra marinade, if you do want a little extra marinade, feel free to just dress it on there. These can even be served hot, of course, is one option straight off the grill. But room temperature or chilled, delicious. So think about what kind of day you have, what kind of party, what kind of meal you want, and do it that way. Because grilled shrimp, ah, oh, double thumbs up. Love it. So you see, once we have it all skewered out, these are so easy, because you can just pull them right off that skewer and hold them by the tail. If you don't want to get your hands all greasy and beautifully flavored, then use a fork, but I say go for it. Mm-hmm. That garlic, lemon, parsley mixture is dynamite. Anybody is gonna like that marinade because they're very classic ingredients. So try that. If you're having guests over, that might be a little safer option for you than some of the ones we're about to go into. I am taking chicken and I'm doing a hoisin glaze. Why do I do that? I have marinated chicken with almost everything and I think that taking it into an Asian direction is going to be a definite treat. It's gonna be a surprise for your palate, your friends' palates, your family's palates, and it's gonna lift it up 
and caramelize that meat. I love to also work with chicken thighs because it's a little gamier, holds its moisture on the grill more than the breast. So let's take a look. Let me show you how to work with the hoisin. It's very simple marinade. And when it is completely grilled and caramelized, you can put extra marinade, lacquered over that. Stays moist, delicious. Even if they're not blazing hot off the grill, they're delicious at room temperature. So that's an excellent item for the summer. Korean beef or tofu if you're a vegetarian is also a popular ingredient that many of us do not know much about. And I've said this many times, if you are gonna use tofu, you wanna press that water out of your super firm tofu so the marinade gets right in. And what are we talking about a Korean marinade? Well, let me show you. Korean barbecue is so trendy these days, but unless you come from Korea or you have Korean ancestries or Korean best friends, you may not even be familiar with what kind of ingredients would go into developing a Korean barbecue marinade. And I am here to walk you through it gently so you have a great understanding because it is delicious and it's an amazing opportunity to use new flavors in your summer eating. Yum. Now this can be for beef or if you're vegetarian, tofu. And it works beautifully for both. I am using beef today, but you know how tofu is. It absorbs flavor when a good marinade into tofu. You're loving it. So how do we start off? A little sesame oil. This is a third of a cup. And you can tell that sesame oil has a nice strong fragrance. And in a marinade, it works well. A third of a cup of soy sauce. We've got chopped ginger, which really has an incredible aroma, but you wanna make sure it's nice and small in your marinade so it actually adheres to whatever your tofu or beef that you're actually marinating. So you skin it, I've shown you before, you take that outer layer off, chop it real fine and add it in. Again, some yummy ground garlic. Garlic pretty much goes in everything I cook, so if you're wondering what that other ingredient is, it's garlic. Go with it. Scallion. Mm. Scallion with soy is like a perfect marriage. It really is. Brown sugar adds that caramelization that's going to definitely work with whatever your protein is. On the grill, it gives an incredible candied effect that kind of makes takes that sugar and those spices and makes them stick to it. Okay, now where are we going from here? This is where it gets pretty unique. Asian pears are a beautiful ingredient. This recipe calls for either an Asian pear puree or an Asian pear simple syrup. So you can take the Asian pear, juice it, reduce it with some sugar, and add a fourth of a cup, or just grind down the actual fruit and add that to it, depends on how chunky you want it. And then sesame seeds. Add some to your marinade and save some for later. Oh my God, this is delectable. You know it's gonna taste delicious. And then when you grill those steak skewers, they're gonna be coated in it. And this marinated beef is excellent over rice. Mmm. The skewers, the thin slice on the beef, the skewers, rice, which I'm gonna show you in a minute with kefir lime. And I know I've talked to you about kefir lime. But there's a way of working with kefir lime that I just want to remind you of again. Very simple technique. It's a tip for the kitchen. What is kefir lime? Kefir lime is an ingredient I love to use, and they usually come in double leaves. I just split it apart. And how do we use them? They come in a packet of fresh leaves. But what we have to do is take out that spine, just so you know. So when you're doing them, when you're using them, if you just fold them in half, and take out that spine, then you can just julienne up your little bite-sized pieces and add them to your rice as you're cooking it. 
Now, why do I like Kaffir Lime? It is fragrant, it is bright, it adds an element of exotic spiciness that's not heat, but it's just almost close to citrusy and coconutty. So when you're steaming your rice, you can add it. When your rice is nice and hot, you can stir it in. Whatever you do, a nice white rice with just a little bit of seasoning is perfect to anchor any of these kebabs that we're doing. The kaffir in this, in this rice is beautiful as a foundation. Hold that Korean marinade. Now, if you are not used to or very familiar with Korean food, I do want to stop and talk to you about kimchi. So many people hear about it, they don't know what it is. Kimchi is fermented cabbage. What it has, it, it has some Korean spice in it. It is a salted cabbage, so it drains and wilts the cabbage, but then it's mixed with that spice and it's actually buried under the ground for over four weeks oftentimes. So it is fermented, it has a little funk to it, but when you're eating it with these flavors, it is desirable in every way. It is definitely expected in a Korean meal. So it offsets the balance and it becomes your pickled spicy vegetable to really, really, really go with all these delicious flavors that we're introducing here on this beef. Took me a while. But now, I never have a day where I don't have it in my fridge because that is a condiment I embrace completely. I want to go back for a minute to what I've got in the middle of my shrimp skewers here on this platter. And this is sweet potato layered to make it look like a flour with crispy sunchokes. Now a sunchoke is so cool because it's a root of a sunflower. Okay, so they call them Jerusalem artichokes sometimes. They look almost like a mixture between ginger and a potato, but they have an almost citrusy flair, but a starchiness. When sliced and crisped up, they look like a potato, but when you eat it, you're gonna have a totally different experience. Absolutely recommended. It's built like a little flower, just out of cute tray display, but you don't have to do that. And mixed with the sweet potato, it's an excellent balance. Okay, now, vegetables. I am going to show you that you can also grill and marinate your vegetables, which sometimes we don't think about, but let's do that. Hi, here we are. I am showing you a couple things. I'm not going to demo too much here, but I really want to talk to you about what you can do in the summertime with your garden vegetables. And this is so cool. Green beans, if you happen to grow them, go to farmer's market, buy them in bushels. They're all available all over all the stores. Let's put a little olive oil on them and throw them on that grill. I mean it. You can just char those green beans right on that grill. If you have a grill basket, put them in the grill basket, but you wanna get that charred effect on them because it's gonna add a little bit of smokiness. Now, once those are charred and on your plate, ah. Oh, one of my favorite all time toppings for a vegetable is a citrus tomato butter. I know it's a little bit decadent. You don't need a ton of it, but it's full of robust flavor. It is butter with lemon, garlic, and tomatoes. It's been stewed together. So this is a warm sauce marinade. And right before service, when your green beans are hot and your marinade is warm, you just ladle it right on top. It's not only super bright and appealing to the eye, it's incredibly bursting into your palate and it takes these green beans to a whole new level. Gorgeous, I'm gonna say right there, eating with your eyes first, that is art, all right. Since we've been doing a couple of Asian marinades, I'm gonna show you a grilled Asian green display with an Asian marinade. Now, what do I have that I threw on the grill? Baby bok choy. It is just cut in half and thrown right on that grill. Anything you're putting on the grill, treat it with a little oil before it goes on just to moisten it a little bit. Look at these runner beans. 
These, if they are available, are incredibly flavorful. That holds the char. It's got, you can eat the whole pod and everything. The beans are really robust. These are just your average snow peas that go a little bit wilty on there and like just really get flavorful. I don't put the baby corn on, but I do definitely buy the marinated baby corn because it adds a citric element. And then Chinese broccoli, very unlike American broccoli because it's much more leafy. Highlight this with some fresh radishes and then for our marinade. We're starting with the same basis. Sesame sauce, sesame oil, peanut oil, soy sauce, little brown sugar, your ginger garlic, and a little shallot, and you want a little bit of minced lime, little fish sauce, and some Thai basil. Thai basil is definitely different than Italian basil. It has an entirely different flavor profile. Ladle these right on over after you take your greens. This is a platter that will be treasured by everybody eating it. This could be Meatless Monday just in and of itself because there's so much flavor in this marinade and in these charred greens. So love it, love it, love it. Top it with a little sesame seed and you have yourself an incredible grilled side dish. And these green beans with this citrus tomato butter and that grilled flavor can't be beat. And then the Asian mixture that I have going on. Again, a meal in and of itself, truly. And that marinade, it makes your palate dance. Well, as much as I love all this food, I'm excited to show you our sweets. I'll be right back. Dip my shrimp. Much for joining for tasting time. Hi, Katie O here in the Carnival Kitchen with sweets. It's our favorite time, the end of the meal, where we add a little sugar on top of what we just ate. And cupcakes and a cake. Oh, yum, summer delight. Let's get those flavors into our baking, right? Mama Bahama cupcakes. What? Coconut, pineapple, orange, topped with a maraschino cherry. I kid you not. This is a cupcake that really takes those Hawaiian ingredients and puts them all into one. It is really, really festive and bright because those flavors of orange and coconut and pineapple, mm, it's like we're sitting at the beach eating sugar. Oh, and that frosting's nice and sweet. Not too much, but a nice sweet frosting. Mm. I topped it with a little orange segment or a maraschino cherry or both if you like. And that's gonna add that little freshness that you're looking for because that's a real cupcake that has real sugar in it. Okay, now another thing about summer baking is that you can decorate with all those incredible things that we see in the summer that really make our eyes dance out in nature. Flowers and butterflies are my theme with tons of cool colors. So co color your frosting. Get your frosting in, or your chocolate into molds and make little butterflies. Decorate, 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 because it's really eating with your eyes first. And when we're eating something that's kind of decadent, we want to enjoy the experience from beginning to end. So the eyes, we want to look forward to it. We want to dive in. I chose blue with a rose and a white chocolate butterfly for my bite. It's a strawberry cupcake too. I almost forgot. Strawberries are in season right now and they're baked right into that cupcake. Mmm. Fruity, yet yeah, layered with that sugary. It's good. It's just really good. Good summertime sweets. Blueberry lemon cake. Two ingredients I think you've seen probably over and over and over again because in my palate, they work. They totally work. Fresh blueberries with 
bright lemon flavors. Look at this cake. I know those are going to burst. Look at how pretty that is. It's all blueberries inside the cake and the cake itself is lemon. The frosting is lemon and then there's lemon zest on top of it. So you and I are gonna take a bite of this one together. Look at that. Thanks for sharing this bite with me. Mmm, I love our time together. I hope you enjoyed that beautiful bite as much as I do. I really love seeing you. Can't wait to see you next week. Thanks for joining me at Katie O's Food Carnival. Have a wonderful time. <laughs>